Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here in the Fuzzy Biker Garage today. There's the Hot Rod Himalayan. But the, if I were to get a new Royal Enfield, what would be the things I would do, five or six things I would do before I even drove it off the showroom floor? What are the five things that, you know, they could call like the adventure model? What would you do? I got a short little list. And uh, the beginning of my list actually doesn't start with this. This is actually item number six on my list. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump ahead and I'm gonna say, Number one thing I would get is a, sand, a stand like this, a wide foot stand. Now this one's a custom made one, but uh, there's lots of options out there. And the reason I would get that is because every time you park somewhere, the one that comes with it is very small, about an inch and a half square maybe. And uh, this, a wide foot stand would give you uh, security when parking on a blue skirt. Okay, next thing I would get, I would raise the fenders on this. I took this bike, as you can see, it's filthy dirty. I took this bike on a hundred mile ride the other day and uh, about 10 miles of that was on dirt and gravel and uh, a lot of mushy, you know, crappy road. And uh, I have, if the fender was, this this one's been raised, the fender would be an inch lower if I wouldn't have raised it. And, uh, you know, you get on those muddy roads and the uh, you get mud and stuff in between the fender and the tire and the tire can actually seize up and act like a brake. Next thing I would do after that, and this is really, this is a really big one is I would put these Dunlop Trail Max Mission tires on. I'd do it on the back and I'd do it on the front. Now this back one here has um, probably 12,000 miles on it. You can see it's kind of getting worn out, although it's not wore out yet. It's not on the adjusters yet or on the wear indicators yet. You can see how it's been kind of beat up in places. Chunks of it are missing and it's it's been a really tough tire and that's why I bought this tire because it is so tough. You know, this is the used one. This is a brand new one, I got to replace it. And you can see how much beefier it is and how much, but if you look at the tire, look how much, you know, these big lugs on the side, this big beefy tread. And, you know, like I said, that tire's got, uh, what did I say, 12,000 miles on it or something like that. Just tough as can be. And uh, it handles better. It's a little heavier. It has a little more gyroscopic force. It's tougher. You don't have to worry about flats. Although I have had a flat, I got a three inch screw in it. Uh, so I would get that on the back and I would definitely get it on the front. And this one I put on a couple thousand miles ago, and uh, the big surprise I got there, it's a heavy tire, and we put the heaviest inner tube, the guys at Baxter Cycle, they showed me this inner tube, it was twice the weight of a normal inner tube, and we put that on there, and all that mass with a 21 inch tire gives you a lot of gyroscopic force, and uh, that really holds the bike up in the, uh, you know, when you're going down the uh, muddy roads. It just, uh, when I was on a uh, trip the other day, I had about 10 miles of mud, like I said, and uh, it just, you know, you felt safe and it did, it did, it, it held itself up. It was stable because of that. How's that? Uh, next thing I would do after doing those things, you need a headlight guard just to, uh, when you raise the fender, it throws, it'll throw pieces of gravel forward and come back at you. And so you need a good headlight guard. Now this is an adequate headlight guard and I'm happy I have it. You can see it's incredibly dirty. See that? But what I would do is I would get a, there's different brands out there. And there, this one mounts to the case here and I had some vibration problems and I had to put this rubber tubing on there. But I've seen some other brands that mount here and here and they actually sit ahead of the headlight a little farther. They still give you the protection, but they don't touch the headlight so you don't get that vibration. Next thing I would do is hand protection. Now this is my cold weather hand protectors. And really what they protect me from is cold. They don't protect me from road. But I do have some that I run in the summertime. These right here. Now these are the Royal Enfield branded hand protectors. And in the summer I take these off and I put these on. Very good. Very good indeed. Put that there for now. Next thing I got on my list is mirror risers. These things right here. This part right here. Now I like the stock mirrors on the Himalayan. They work pretty good. I like the way they look. They're round. I don't like those octagonal ones that a lot of people have. I mean, I'm sure they work great. And I've ridden bikes with them. They do work great. But, uh, and they fold in and all that neat stuff. But uh, I like these mirrors. And what I did was I put these risers on. And what they do is they come up and they come out. And that allowed me to clear my shoulders so I could see a little better. And also put the mirrors a little more in my line of sight, you know. Instead of being down here, they're up here a little bit. So that's a, that's a good thing. So those are uh, really the five things I would do right away if I were to buy a new one like this. If I were to get, and I, you know, let's call it the adventure model, the fuzzy biker adventure model. What would we uh, the next things I would do is, uh, there are some things I would do, but I'd like to do a little experimenting with. And the first one would be the windshield. Now I love this windshield and it's a great windshield. I wouldn't get rid of it on this motorcycle, 
But if I were to buy a new motorcycle and I had an opportunity to get a different windshield, I might look to see what my other options are. And uh, I would look for one that might be just a little shorter. I like how wide this is. I like one a little shorter. And you know, the thing works really good, except for uh, when I'm out on uh, really rough dirt roads, especially really rutted roads, you have to be able to see ahead of you and get a good look at the road, read the road better. And I think a shorter windshield would be good for that. Uh, the next thing I would look at and might consider something different are these racks and bags, the racks and bags. Now, I like these racks, they're small. On this bike, that's what I wanted. Um, small bags, you know, day riding, and uh, they work really well. I'm going to mention Baxter Cycle again. Baxter Cycle has about a dozen different bag options for the back of these raw Linfield Tim Lions. Different rack systems, different bag systems, hard bags, soft bags, folding bags, um, watertight bags, you know, all kinds of uh, incredibly good looking lockable bags, you know, just lots of very good options and I would certainly look at that. Uh, so the next thing I would look at is this different seat. Now I just got this seat, I got about 500 miles on it, maybe more, five or 600. Seat concept, tall seat, and I'm incredibly happy with that. So why would I look at different seats? Uh, the reason is I just like to know what else is out there. You know, I'd like to know what else other options were out there. Um, that doesn't mean I wouldn't get this seat. That means I'd just like to see and ride other bikes with it. I'm very happy with this seat. The next thing I would look at getting would be heated grips. And uh, I'm really on the line about that. Now I'm, I'm, you know, I've had a lot of motorcycles and I've put a lot of stators in bikes. That's when your power system goes out, your electrical system goes out because you've overloaded or gets hot. Uh, I ride my motorcycles a lot. And uh, so I'll go out and I'll ride, you know, all day long and that means they get a lot of heat. A lot of people go out and ride for an hour or two and then park it and you know, they don't get a lot of heat soaking. Now I do, I do, I'll ride for, you know, eight hours in a day easy, even more. And uh, this will get very heat soaked. And uh, so I'm a little worried about putting heated grips on and adding anything that might put more uh, demand on my charging system, might create more heat. Now on the other side of that, I don't really do a lot of long winter rides, winter rides. so. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the next thing I would look at, and this is something I think everybody should have this, and I, I didn't put it in the beginning of the list because I want to look at options, but these are Fobo air pressure sensors, and they work in conjunction with my phone, which is great. Uh, every time I go for a ride, I come out, I turn the, the Bluetooth on my phone, the app on, and it tells me the tire pressure in all my bikes. And um, what I would like to do is find a different system. I don't think Fobo makes this yet. Now maybe they do, and if they did, I would buy it. But a different system where I would use the same sensors down here, but I'd like a dash mount reader on the, you know, so I could be driving down the road, just glance down and see what my tire pressures were. Next part of my list are things I don't think I want to do or don't think I would change. And uh, the top of that list is the suspension. I'm very happy with the suspension on this motorcycle. I have ridden other motorcycles with YYS or YSS or whatever brand that is and Hogan's, Hagen's, whatever they are. And I think they're great, but I don't think they're necessary for my kind of riding. Uh, same with the back shock, you know. I've seen those and I've rode those and they're really cool and they have adjustability and all that. But uh, for the kind of riding I do, you know, the fuzzy biker riding guy, I'm really happy with the suspension this bike has. I think I'd spend the money elsewhere. Uh, other thing is a pipe. I don't really care for loud motorcycles. I've got a very loud Harley right there with drag pipes. If I want to make noise, I'll get that thing out. Um, so I don't think I'd change that. The only reason I would change it would be weight savings. And I got to check it into that and you only save about four or five pounds. So I don't think that's a good enough reason to, uh, to make the change. Other thing I have on here is air filter. Uh, a lot of people get those, I don't know what they're called, DNA or KNN or whatever air filter systems. Oh, they breathe better and all that neat stuff. And I agree, they probably do. Uh, the thing is, I ride so much dirt and gravel that I don't want a system that lets in more air and also lets in more dust. So I'm happy with the system I have now. Uh, I have, you know, I pay 15 or $20 for a new air filter every couple thousand miles. And I consider that a worthwhile investment. If it keeps more of the uh, dirt out of the bike, you know, out of the engine, out of the oil, then I'm, I'm happy with that. Other things I have on here are uh, engine guards. And that's one I go back and forth on a lot. Um, there are some really neat engine guard options. And one of the ones is a two point system, but it covers the oil filter and I don't like that. The other one is a GB system or there's other brands also, but it's a three point system. And I, I do like the way that one looks. However, I also think it's heavy and it costs a lot. And the uh, only reason I would get something like that 
is if I did a lot of miles and I wanted to put highway pegs on here and I just don't know that I would use that on this motorcycle so not sure if that's a good idea <laughs> anyway so fuzzy biker adventure bike would have from the shop it would have the fender risers the different tires the Dunlop Tour Max Dunlop uh, Trail Max I'm sorry Dunlop Trail Max tires a headlight guard to protect my that I'd raise the uh, I'd raise the mirrors, I'd put hand guards on, and I would definitely put a larger foot down here. I think those are things that the bike, before you even get it off the showroom floor, you might as well just have them on the bike because I think those are everything you should definitely have. Uh, the next thing I would do after that is, uh, of course, I'd do the FOBO sensors. I think everybody should have those, but I'd look for different options of that. I'd check options for seats. Like I said, I talked about the uh, different things for uh, wind guards. I'd like to see what different options are for that and uh, heated grips and uh, <laughs> uh, the bags there's so many new there are so many really neat options for bags on these bikes I, I go to Baxter cycle all the time and it seems like every week they get a different style or different you know rack system and it's very impressive you know very neat looking but uh, anyway it's a great bike and uh, I'm gonna take it out tomorrow for I got a hundred 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 fifty mile hundred hundred fifty mile day ride planned and uh, I'm going to go have some fun on that hot ride. So if you all can do it, get yourselves out there and ride, my friends. Life is good. Wahoo!